Well, as y'all can see, uh, there ain't no weight on the back end. It's hard to get up on ramps. And uh, so we need to get this thing where four-wheel drive work on it. So let's go. Uh, first thing we got to do is replace the front pinion seal and the axle. And then we'll put the drive shaft on it. All right, well, I was looking up some information for this pinion seal, and I came across information on the carbon joint. I wish I'd looked at this book first. Apparently, there is a difference in this joint here because they they want you to mark the joint. So apparently, this thing, if you flip it upside down, maybe it don't work right, but it looked almost identical to me. And also the ball, the ball stays on the shaft. The ball does not go into where I put it. It will end up in there, but according to this, you leave it on the shaft and then you put your uh, spring, you, you washer and you cap seats, ball seats, and then the bigger washer and then the seal, and then the ball goes on that part, on the drive shaft part. And so when you slide it together, you're basically forcing that ball past the seal. So what I did was I just went ahead and put the ball already in the joint, and then once I pressed everything together to get the bearing caps in place, I believe it probably seated that ball anyway onto that stud. So. I don't think it's going to be no issue as long as the ball's on the stud and you get everything back together. I don't see I don't see the big issue. But uh, yeah, let me see there. So I still ain't really found good information on this pinion seal replacing the pinion seal. This is the GM manual. This is the uh, Haynes manual, which uses a lot of the basically the same information out of the GM book it's like that it says uh, you know be sure to mark that cup and yoke uh, but I know on the pinion cell you've got to you're supposed to uh, find the torque on it before you take it off well, this the, the pinion nut has already been taken off this one and it's just loosely on there now the preload is about 10 to 20 inch pounds on that pinion bearing. Okay, so this book, the only thing it lists really is the pinion seals of either axle. And it, it says use an inch pound torque wrench to check the torque required to rotate the pinion and record it for later. Describe punch alignment marks on the pinion stem nut and flange like I said you know it shows you marking this it's a little late for mine because I've already had this this off I replaced this uh, flange so I had took the nut off without realizing that I probably needed to do something get some readings so you know I want you to count the threads and all this stuff uh, then remove the nut, pry out the old seal, lubricate the new seal and put it in place. And line the mating marks for, made before disassembly, install the companion flange. If necessary, use a large piece of pipe as a spacer and tighten the pinion nut uh, to draw the flange in place. Do not try to hammer the flange into position. Then apply an unhardened sealant to the ends of the splines, which are visible in the center of the flange, so oil will be sealed in. And the <clears throat> washer and the nut. The nut is a, a locking nut. And then it says, uh, of course, this is on a semi floating axle, which is not the front end of ours. Um, that if you reuse the old pinion, you can tighten the nut no more than one to five inch pounds more than what you uh, what you recorded <laughs> so this does me not a damn bit of good to try to figure out what I need to do on mine and 
think there is a torch spec. All right, so this is straight out of the GM manual. Specification for Chevrolet or, or GM 10 bolt or 12 bolt. And they got a Dana 44. Uh, a used pinion bearing preload, five to 10 inch pounds. If you're replacing it, then you gotta go 15 to 30 inch pounds. And uh, that's really all it says. It's a little bit higher for a Dana 44 used as 10 to 20 and the new is 20 to 40 inch pounds I also found something else that I didn't I didn't notice you'll see it's got four little dots and they ain't on this one until you flip it over and there they are so I've got this on backwards this thing should be flipped around. I don't see, to be honest with you, I don't see where it's going to make that much of a difference. But uh, if it does, then we'll just have to take it out and uh, we'll have to flip it around. I'm not going to bother with it right now, but uh, just something to point out on yours if you're doing it. Uh, look for the alignment marks. I didn't see anything on this, and uh, I could mic that, but it looks uh, identical from one side to the other just looking at it. I don't see that there's any difference in this coupling here. I don't think that's really going to bother us, hopefully not. Okay, so I wish I'd went ahead and painted this yoke. I guess it's a little late now. And uh, that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put, set the drive shaft up in this area. And then connect it to the yoke and then we'll connect it to the transfer case. So I'll try to set you up. get this tape off here without messing up our bearing caps. And we're gonna slide this you join into the yoke here. Center it. Now you don't need these clips. They give you four of these, these clips, but you don't need them because this got a little notch right here. It's going to hold it in. And the caps, which I'm replacing, Moog 360-10 is the uh, bearing cap pieces. Now these do not have a uh, a little clip and some of them do but these don't but that notch right there keep it in centered in we'll go ahead and get these started I'm going to just snug them up with my little impact. And we'll 
will come back later and torque them. So, right, so this part's in. Now we just got to get the other part. So it's going to be very, very difficult to film because there's just no room in here. I mean, basically, this is all the room I got. So but basically, we're going to line this up. Now, this will turn because it's out. It's in the, the transfer case is in two-wheel drive, so it should turn. The hubs are unlocked, so the drive shaft will also turn. Uh, so it's just a matter of lining up the holes. Center, it's got a little centering ring. We'll make sure that gets centered and then just tighten down the four bolts. Okay, with the bolt snug down, you can see it just barely clears. All right, we're gonna torque these bolts 74 foot-pounds and these bolts 15 foot-pounds. Using my new torque wrench. So let's get that done.